Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. And this is our Applied Near Life session. And today I would like to apply near life to the health of our eyes and how that impacts the total health. My name is Esa Zanambasi. I'm a very passionate near life user. I use all their products, all our products. And I'm also very passionate about health and wellness. The name of my business is Simply Healthier. And I am trained professionally as a medical doctor. I've been a medical doctor for several years. And I have truly seen that the best way is to prevent problems. So today I want to discuss uh, eyes, health of the eyes and how that can impact our entire uh, body and the total health. Now, because we are dealing with eyes, this is a very visual and very um, pictorial presentation. I hope you'll be happy with that. Okay, let's start with this said by William Shakespeare several years ago, the eyes are the window to your soul. That is so true because as we go along, you'll see why it's important to be mindful of the health of your eyes. Now, nutrition, I believe, and I think it is a fact, plays a central role in eye health. The eyes develop differently, right in neutral, when nutrition is skewed, when it is not the correct nutrition. So that's why I totally believe that we have a big responsibility to future generations to be healthy ourselves, okay? And then an eye that does not mature properly cannot function normally then this is a big one. High intake of sugar leads to many people with visual problems. So you just have to look around at modern diet and know that that is a, a serious issue and we'll unpack it as we go along. Then another one, areas around the eye change, the area around the eye changes with poor diet and allergies because the delicate skin under the eye and around the eye becomes dark, it swells, it forms creases and becomes puffy. Then another one, digestive problems often accompany allergies and eye problems. So just the eyes are so important because Eyes need to be constantly lubricated, constantly. Eyes provide an open doorway to view how efficiently the body is lubricating different tissues. So just by looking at somebody's eyes, you can tell how the rest of the body is being lubricated. Isn't that freaky <laughs> and scary? So. Uh, I'm sure all of you after this presentation will be looking at people's eyes more intentionally starting tomorrow. And then eyes have complex visual apparatus which with specialized needs for nutrients. And we'll go through those nutrients later on. And that is in order to function properly and maintain a good state of health. So with that introduction, let us have a look at the anatomy of the eye. And it looks something like that. You all probably would remember a long, long time ago in primary school when we were being taught this picture in simple form. And the fascinating thing is that the picture that we see is upside down on the retina, very much like a camera of old, the cameras of old, okay? But that's what it looks like, very intricate, but very, very 
important. And their muscles, there is a lens here. The, there is a, an aperture here called the pupil. And of course, the retina right at the back and off the retina is the optic nerve straight to the brain. Now that is important. I won't go too much into pathological, serious pathological things that can happen, but the eye can be um, a direct connection to the brain via the optic nerve and therefore is prone to being infected, okay? And pass the infection on. But as I say, I will not dwell in such areas. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about. But yes, the eyes are indeed the gateway to your health because a lot of diagnoses can be made such as high cholesterol, 62% of cases can be seen via the eyes, um, high blood pressure, diabetes, just by looking in the eyes. And now this is an example of signs of cholesterol, um, eyes symptoms of high cholesterol. You can see, for example, these spots on the skin of the eyelids. They, they put an interesting name, xanthelasma. You can see round whitish circles that look um, different from the dark part, really white. They call it arca senilis, which means um, a senile arc around the eyes. Or um, veins can be occluded, plaque can develop, in the, these vessels in the neck and that can impact the eyes and impact mm -hmm. eyesight. So eyes are important for making diagnosis. So today um, I just want to speak about the, perhaps the first five on that list, but all these conditions can be due to lack of adequate nutrients. And that's quite interesting. But we'll talk about cataracts, we'll talk about dry eye, floaters, night blindness, macular degeneration, and then I've mentioned the puffy, dark, inflamed, wrinkled skin under the eye as a sign of allergies. And then some people are sensitive to light. We'll, we'll talk about it as we talk about night blindness. And then there's a condition called nystagmus, which is associated with a condition in alcoholics called Wernicke's, Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, where it is an extreme, <laughs> extreme case of real serious malnutrition. Somebody has drank themselves to a near stupor, the eyes can get affected. I won't talk about that in my presentation, but I'll talk about the first five. So let's start with cataract. Okay, this is a picture to show what a normal eye would look like. You can see through the pupil. And then a cataract can be seen as an opacity or a cloudiness, a clouded lens. Very common, very, very common. Um, this can be, this can lead to blindness. Generally, a lot of cataract uh, surgeries are done where the natural opaque or clouded um, lens is replaced by a prosthetic lens. In the olden days, once um, the lens was removed, the person was given very thick glasses. But now with advancement of uh, science and medicine and surgery, it is possible to insert uh, a new prosthetic lens, a uh, synthetic lens, as it were. Now, cataract is often very highly associated with diabetes, and that's because there's an enzyme called aldose reductase, which converts glucose to sorbitol, which is a sugar alcohol, which then damages the lens. And then cataracts can happen in non-diabetic people, but it is quite common in people who are diabetic or pre-diabetic. 
But in non-diabetics, it is due to ox oxidative damage, especially from the effects of the sun. And it is in those people who have diets low in carotenoids. Carotenoids are those um, colors, the greens and yellows and reds in vegetables and fruits. Right, so I just want to point out the danger in sugar because we've just said an enzyme converts sugar into a sugar alcohol called sorbitol, which then damages the lens. Sugar per se is very highly addictive and a lot of people use it as either a reward, a celebration, or to, to deal with, um, with depression and anxiety. So sugar is something that we need to be so aware of. But let us therefore make a point of training our children as well as possible so that when they grow up, they won't be reaching out for those things. Perhaps I'm speaking too late because too many of our modern day diet foods that are available in our diet are packed with sugar. And many food manufacturers take it a step further and actually add sorbitol. Your body doesn't even need to convert that um, sugar using the enzyme because they've added it to the sweetened things that are being sold. So we are in some sort of trouble, but we just need to be aware and also be intentional about our diets and the need to supplement where required. So yes, if our children are to become healthy adults and end the trend of chronic disease, older people, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, have to lead by example, first of all, and have to become more strict with eliminating processed sugars because they are natural sugars that won't have the same effect or are safer. Let's talk about dry eye, a very common condition. If you look around and uh, as I say, starting tomorrow, you should be more intentional at looking at people's eyes and see what you can glean out of just looking at people's eyes. But you will know that you can diagnose deficiencies such as omega-3 and vitamin A and zinc deficiencies because the deficiency of those nutrients hinder, um, hinders secretion of mucus, which leads to dry eye. And uh, that might also be an early clue to an autoimmune disorder, such as the effects of excessive levels of estrogens. You see, we tend to see more autoimmune diseases and disorders in the females. But these days, due to the, the modern lifestyle, we have a lot of xenoestrogens, a lot of estrogen-like compounds in our environment that are causing even men to become estrogenized, become very, um, estrogen dominant, and that is leading to a lot of issues. So what I'm saying is that if there is hormonal imbalance, there is a higher risk of deficiency of these things and therefore, deficiency of these nutrients, and therefore the development of um, dry eye that we are talking about now is highly likely. So, for the children, I thought we would talk about kids a little bit. Um, let's discourage overuse of screens. Is that possible even? Well, we can try. And then encourage them to uh, play outside. 
And then other things like ensuring hydration, all those are important um, practices. Now, dry eye will manifest with the sun and gritty feeling in the eyes. There might be excessive te tearing or watering of the eyes. I'm sure you've seen some people and children particularly like that. It, there may be redness. It might be fluctuation in vision, especially when using computers. You know, sometimes you see well, and then a few minutes later, you, don't, you can't see very much. Itchiness, pain and tenderness. Now, as regards dehydration, it is very common in um, young people because generally, when you encourage them to drink water, they would rather reach for a cool drink a sweetened drink, one of those with a lot of sugar. And that's what we've said we should discourage. And then as for the older people, unfortunately, the older one gets, the, the more there's a tendency to lose the sense of thirst so that they can actually forget to drink water. And that can impact their eyes and cause them to develop dry eye. I've talked about um, technology, and that's because it, it can reduce the protective film over the eye, causing inflammation and oxidative damage. And just that can result in a dull look. Because as we say, the eyes are the windows to our soul, whether we are vi vibrant and happy or dull and um, looking dejected. So the next thing that I want to talk about regarding eyes are floaters. Floaters, this picture over here is somebody who was looking up in the sky and there were things floating around as if there were objects in the sky. Those are floaters and a lot of people have them and just get used to them. I remember for myself, I once had um, eye surgery when I was in my second year in university. My left eye had a, a lesion that needed to be cut off. And for several months, in fact, I think it went into years, I had floaters in my left eye. But over the time, they have dramatically subsided. So floaters are very common, but they, they might be a, a warning, an early warning to inadequacy in nutrients that maintain the eye integrity, the inner part of the eye. And um, I just want to show you another picture of floaters. It looks something like that, where the things, the debris, debris that comes off the retina falls into this medium inside the eye. It is gelatinous medium. And they just float around. So with every turn of the head, they look like they're objects passing by and yet they're within the eye itself. So those are floaters. And now let's look at the next thing that is night blindness. Very, very common. In fact, uh, when I drive at night, I can <laughs> diagnose or um, point out another driver especially ahead of me, who has a challenge with vision because they, they're driving like they're driving on eggshells. They, 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 they're not sure where the road is and they're driving very, very tentatively. That's a sign of night blindness, very common. I suspect it's a, a huge contributor to road uh, incidents, but be that as it may, the eye looks something like that, and we have what we call rods on the periphery of the retina and cones, which respond to bright light in the middle. And the rods are the ones that get um, damaged or, as a result of poor nutrition, don't function very well. Then lastly, I'm going to talk about um, Macular degeneration, those are the topics I chose about the eye to discuss. 
And normal vision will be something like that. But in somebody with macular degeneration, they lose central vision. The, the vision in the center, central part of the visual field is lost. Sorry, I'm trying to mute somebody. And so instead of looking at a, the full picture, it looks something like that. Now, the macula is a, a point on the retina in the center. And I'll just go to the next picture to show you the, the two types of macular degeneration. There is the dry and the wet. The wet is when the vessels are actually leaking blood and a lot of oozing. That is the wet macular degeneration. The dry is just um, perhaps no, no oozing of anything. It's just dry due to poor nutri nutrition and uh, dehydration as well. So those are the conditions I picked to discuss regarding eye health. But not all is lost because we have great nutrition supplements. However, there is a proviso here that you need to ensure that lifestyle is well ordered and disciplined. You cannot supplement your supplement or medicate away bad habits. And another way of putting it is that you need to start preventative maintenance early. Don't wait until problems happen. For example, developing macular degeneration must be really distressing because a big chunk of vision is damaged. Having said that, malnutrition is manifesting from infancy all the way through to old age. It's becoming increasingly common as a result of food that is highly processed, as a result of inadequate physical activity. Physical activity actually ensures good health because the cardiovascular system, the blood supply, the lymphatic system, the muscles are all kept in top form. But if they begin to deteriorate, that will affect all parts of the body, not least of which the eyes as well. And there's also a link with underactivity of uh, the thyroid gland and other hormones, they become imbalanced. And also malnutrition is uh, linked quite remarkably to exposure to toxins. So we in the family that we call near life have solutions, we have answers, but as I say, we cannot supplement away a uh, bad lifestyle, we need to make those fundamental changes as well. So what do processed foods and sugars do? This is what they do. They cause hormonal imbalances. There's the insulin roller coaster if there's too much sugar and the formation of sorbitol that we've mentioned. It also depletes the immune system because a lot of sugar and uh, processed foods compete with vitamin C. And I'm about to show you that that is a very important nutrient, but they compete with vitamin C and other nutrients. They corrode the inside of blood vessels. So now you can imagine the blood vessels inside the eye are small, they're delicate, and they have nowhere else to draw blood from. We call them end arteries. And they, they, that's it, the, the eye is the, the last stop as it were. So if there is corrosion and there is leakage and therefore uh, wet ma macular degeneration happens, this sets up a cascade of damage throughout, but now we are talking about the eyes. And then it also depletes the body's collagen. Remember collagen is that cement, C for collagen, C for cement, C for vitamin C for that matter, which holds tissues together. We've talked about um, the retina that can 
get damaged and detached. That, by the way, is one of the signs if the floaters that are happening very suddenly in the eye um, and rapid loss of vision. That could be because there is retinol, that, that film at the back of the eye that gets the pictures impacted on it. Retinal detachment, okay? Because of collagen that isn't being formed properly due to nutrition deficiencies. So I hope you can connect these dots and see what we have been saying, the importance of blood sugar control. It, isn't, it doesn't only stop at cataract, but it goes right inside and affect the retina and everything else, the blood vessels in there. So for the guests and the visitors, I just want to go through this little quick visual to tell you about lifestyle. The Neolife Wellness uh, Lifestyle Advice and Pyramid is that we need to do physical activity. We need to be eating plenty of whole grains. Now I'm telling you right away that that is a tall order in modern lifestyle and the time factor. There is no time to look for whole grains because most of the grains that we receive have been partially processed and the key ingredient has been removed or the key ingredients. Then we need to be eating lots of fruits and vegetables, another tall order. We need to avoid the wrong types of fats and sugars. And if we do have them in our diet, have very little of them and have enough protein to sustain us. Another tall order, okay? But that is the typical lifestyle where people are eating way too much of the wrong fats and sugars and hardly doing any physical activity, hardly eating the right amounts of protein, proteins and fruits and vegetables and whole grains. So, to the guests, just know that disease doesn't just happen when you first feel pain. It's a, a downward spiral. And so knowing how to remain in the energetic zone and not allowing yourself to quickly slip into the tired and the sick zones are something that we are inviting you to have a look at because that is what we have to offer. And unfortunately, a lot of people spend 20 to 50 years living in the tired and sick zones, and that impacts the health of their eyes. And as one grows older, macular degeneration is actually known as age-related macular degeneration. It seems to become more prevalent with age. So we have solutions such as whole grain oils, and we'll show you other nutrients in our flagship product called Trianen, which will feed the cells at that level, at a cellular level, helps to enhance energy and also to improve utilization of other nutrients throughout the body, most importantly in the eye. So now let's look at some targeted solutions. We in this family say, always start with the core nutrition. They are what we call foundation products, which I'm about to show you. And then you add targeted solutions for the specific problems. Today's topic being eye health. So our core nutrition looks like that. It has um, pro-vitality and it has amino acids which have been prepared with the right types of fat, the right type of carbohydrates with vitamins and minerals. So it's a, actually a complete meal as you see it there. That is our core nutrition. However, out of it, I've already shown you TNN, which is the core of the core, as I like to call it in pro-vitality. And then out of it, I want to highlight omega-3. Omega-3 in our family is very important and not least with eye health, because we pointed out it helps with lubrication. It helps with the immunity of the eye. 
It helps with the development of the eye in the child before the child is born. And that is all very crucial because we've agreed that a well-formed, well-developed eye will function well. So that is, there's so many reasons to fall in love with the components of pro-vitality. There is that, and then there is another product in there called um, carotenoid complex. Carotenoid complex is this one in the middle. Very, very important. And you will appreciate just how important it is as I wind up this presentation. But along with carotenoid complex, which is an antioxidant for the fatty areas of our, our body, the cell membranes, the eye, everywhere that omega-3 happens to be needed, you need carotenoid. There's a corresponding antioxidant for the watery portions of our bodies, of which the eye is a very important one, called flavonoid complex. And those antioxidants are called phytonutrients, meaning plant-derived nutrients. They're very important for healthy eyes, and you will find them in another pack that we have called phytodefense. Very, very important. Then I just want to talk a little bit more about age-related macular degeneration. I know you're wondering, oh my gosh, what if I know somebody with it? Well, here are some facts that you might need to know. On the retina is an area called the macula lutea. That is the point where light focuses with greatest intensity, and therefore it has those structures called cones over there, okay? And over there is where these carotenoids, particularly lutein and zeaxanthin, are concentrated. You know, I always marvel at the way we human beings that were created. They're concentrated right there. And they have a role to play because they protect the underlying structure from damage. You can imagine there is light coming through all the time because that is how we see, right? And that is exactly where these carotenoids are concentrated. But the key is that they have to be in the diet. They have to be provided. And we've agreed that it might be difficult to provide adequate amounts. So highest levels of lutein and zeaxanthin intake have been associated with 75% reduction in the risk of developing age-related macular degeneration. So if you know anybody, a relative, a friend who might be suffering from eye problems, suggest our phytonutrients, specifically carotenoid complex, which is found in the core nutrition as well. The other thing, uh, sulforaphane, is sulforaphane, which is found in cruciferous vegetables. Okay, things like broccoli, your cauliflower, cruciferous vegetables. Those also protect the retina. Isn't that amazing? So it isn't only for the protection of the prostate and the ovaries and all that. It also protects the eyes. And then we have omega-3, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin E. All those protect against the wet form of macular degeneration by strengthening blood vessels. Remember, wet macular degeneration means there is leakage. And you need vitamin C to build strong collagen. You need all these other nutrients as well. And then the key is therefore to supply, the key to supplying nutrients is the ability to utilize them. You don't just supply them and hope that they'll do the right thing. The body has to be able to utilize them. So that comes to what is going on in the stomach. If the stomach is being interfered with, and I'm telling you this because I know for a fact in my practice as a medical doctor, people are using too much of 
the anti-acids, antacids and um, proton pump inhibitors to ostensibly reduce stomach acid, but they are interfering with the utilization of several nutrients. And this may be an underlying issue in many cases of age-related macular degeneration. So I hope you, you're with me as I connect these dots. Um, <laughs> it's my uh, hobby to connect dots. So let's wind up by talking about um, whole food vitamins that we have. Vitamin C prevents buildup of sorbitol, we've said that. Vitamin B complex contains choline and inositol, and it is also found in TNN in the lecithin that you find in TNN. All those are important for eye health. Now the eye contains large amounts of highly unsaturated fats. So it is important, it is crucial, and that is why we need carotenoids and flavonoids and the phytonutrients to have generous amounts of antioxidants to protect those fats and to protect the macula and that area which, on which light shines. So ladies and gentlemen, deterioration of eye health can be prevented or delayed by wise dietary choices. That is the summary of this <laughs> presentation that might sound complex, but you can watch it again. Now, I want to highlight this particular uh, supplement, vitamin A and D. I love this supplement because it is very well priced. It is essential for our eyes and other parts of our bodies. The retina consists of rods and cone structures. Okay, we've said that. The rods are at the periphery and are for poor light vision. And that's because they contain something called visual purple. And visual purple is derived from vitamin A. So night blindness is a clear sign of vitamin A deficiency. So whenever you see somebody driving in front of you or somebody who's doing crazy things on the road, just know that they're probably your next customers if you can offer them some vitamin A and D. The two go together in this product because vitamin D and calcium deficiency have been found to be associated with another eye condition that is genetic and can be triggered by these epigenetic factors such as deficiency of vitamin D and calcium, and that is called retinitis pigmentosa. I won't go into that, but that is an eye condition as well. Then as we finish off soon, minerals are very important. I've talked about the importance of zinc, and you notice that I put it here with this man who's on his gadgets because he's being exposed to EMF and the cell phone as all of us are, which dry the retina. So remember zinc and our minerals are chelated, which means that their absorption rate is way higher than other minerals that you find elsewhere. Finally, uh, or almost finally, regularly detox for healthy eyes. You remember that the eyes will give people a clue to your overall health. It might show that there is a bit of jaundice. It might show some puffiness. It might show all sorts of things. So a regular detox helps other organs, such as the liver and the gut, to work well. And you, in a detox, the key ingredients there, the key supplements are beta guard and garlic and stage six, and in other markets that have it, acidophilus. Yes. And use non-toxic personal and home care products, please. So I want to thank you for this presentation. I'm sharing so that may you be reminded that eyes are 
very important. And now we can all have a good discussion. I'll invite you to discuss. Thank you. Thank you.